welcome back to Heart to Heart with me, Shakti Sundari. I'm here at a beautiful retreat centre in Ubud Bali called The Ark, which is run by Anthony Abagnano, together with his beautiful partner, Amy Rochelle. Amy is a detox naturopath, and Anthony Abagnano is very well known for his alchemy of breath, breath work, and so much more. So really looking forward to speaking to them both. Welcome, Anthony, and welcome, Amy. Thank you. Let's take a breath. <sighs> More breath. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is nice to connect with you. Mm. Yeah, because you are sitting in this space of love mm. and togetherness right now. You spoke earlier about a new project, a new co-creation, Gateways to Intimacy. I'm guessing this has, is, you know, is informed by what you've been living and experiencing. But can you talk a little bit about this? So, or is it top secret? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we can talk about it. Um, what I do find is that most of the people, uh, the, 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 the demographic of people that I work with are women. Uh -huh. And by far, the majority is sort of 80 or 85%. And um, they're, they're in the age bracket of 25 to 55. Mm -hmm. And um, I understand, I mean, that teaches me that, and I'm told that I'm safe to be around. And um, that's because I exhausted myself in the 60s. <laughs> I remember <laughs> saying to Amy during, our, during that testing period, I said, I just can't do that anymore. I, don't, I can't. I can't objectify you like that. I just know it's a quick descent to the end of another cycle of relationship. And I would really love to invest in something and have more possibility than that. Um, and so I think by virtue of my journey, the, the darkness and the shadow of my, my youth to, um, to not, to understand what longing means really to understand that, that when I long for somebody, I'm unconsciously objectifying them and I'm making them what I need or the goal of my attention mm. or my conquest or whatever language you use in whichever decade you're living, um, that, that, that it's really in the longing that the message lies, not in the achieving what I'm longing. And that was a huge lesson for me. and. Um, especially around sexuality. So to feel the feeling without seeking the resolution of it. And um, there are so many metaphors for this in music and in life, like that note before resolution where you're waiting for the song to come back to the whole again. And there's that moment of suspense that is so valid and so rich and so much what we both experienced during that eight months that it was really the essence of the courtship was learning to live with the longing and to celebrate the longing rather mm. than the result of the longing which is remarkably quick in a way you know the longing is really where the richness is and so what what I wanted to do, and what I was so fascinated about in our, in our engagement of relationship was that it got to the point where if Amy would walk in the room, I would feel a sexual feeling. And I'm always noticing the shape of the space that's between us. It's always, you know how like those two faces that look at each other form the shape yes. of a chalice? Yes, yeah, yeah. And that's moving all the time and it's morphing and it's all, I feel it now, I've got goosebumps as I think about where her body is and what form it's making and what the shape is that we're creating together. So for me, Gateways to Intimacy is about how can we be conscious of what that shape is and how can we work with it joyfully and with the co-commitments as our guide to be together and to be in a permanent state of awakening rather than deadening and repeat. So I think the gateway is where we would 
potentially repeat. Okay, but now there's a gateway. You can either go through the gateway, yeah. and that's probably where shadow is yeah. or where we're challenged or where we might blame or huff off or run away. Yeah. And instead, okay, are we going to go through this gateway or are we going to go around and around and around till you don't even want to look at that person anymore and you have to just get away from each other? You know, so, okay, here's the gateway, here's the opportunity. And so trespassing or, or excuse me, um, going into surpassing and going into these places, something else is opening up from there and then opening up and then a deeper root of trust is built where I know no matter what it is now with him, he's still going to be there. That doesn't give me carte blanche to act out in any way. Actually, it gives me reverence and say thank you because I know he's going to be there. So it puts the onus on me to keep rising up to say, hey, I think we're at a gateway. Or he says, hey, we're at a gateway. Keep going, traversing it. And so this, this gateways to intimacy, is this more going to be work that's geared to couples um, and encompassing more than breath work and all, all your pre previous learnings and teachings? Mm -hmm. or? Well, that's quite intuitive you. I, I think it, it does um, encompass even more than what we've been doing individually. And we don't even know exactly what it is yet and we're just experimenting with it we already wanted to put, do something with it over a year ago and we realized like no we we need to <laughs> stay focused on yeah. ourselves yeah. and let's keep learning what this thing is and we're we're just baby birthing mm. some of the first stages but it's really showing us and teaching us we don't really know exactly what it is per se it's showing us what it wants to be and what to do I think yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of my practice is being present with what it is that wants to happen. So I use a, a meditation technique, and my breath work is all about that. So there's a lot of trust and acceptance that what will unfold will unfold. But what's really happened is in the visits that I've made to Amy's retreats and workshops, and the visits she's made into mine, that people keep coming up and saying, "We want more. We want more of what it is that you have. There's something about you that is so." whatever it is, that, that appealing in some way. And so um, I think we're both feeling that how can we stay small and offer that, you know, not get taken by it, but, yeah. to, but also to show up in a way that can really support. And it's not just for couples, no. I think it's mm -hmm. really life. It's life. It's parenting, really. Um, we won't ever have a physical child together, but I think this is our child together is to hold people together in whatever context yeah. it is and however we can, whenever it is. And it's not just a class or a retreat. It could be in a grocery store or it could be um, in a restaurant or in any situation. Like how can we just by nature, we're not necessarily looking for it. It's just to be available to hold in whatever capacity that we can be a benefit to others in, in what we share or our own growth. At, as an offering, to always be ready, mm. to always be ready. Yeah, you mentioned service as a big part of your mission, really, your purpose for both of you. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And so it could be intimacy, it could be with a breath, it could be with detox or food or a sharing or right here, right now with us or with our dog, his children, our family, whatever, you know. How can, how can I be out of my way enough that I can actually be there for another because I'm doing my own work? There's this great word community that is being used more and more. People are also using the word tribe, which kind of like I mm. always find a bit jarring. In fact, one time we looked it up in the dictionary, in the Apple dictionary, and it says division. Try, three. Try, it means yeah. a division of three. Comes, that's this etymology. And yeah. It always bothered me, tribe, because you either in it or out of it. And when you're in it, if you're not in it, you don't belong. And if you are in it, you do belong. And that's where we have duality as replicated. And right. so as much as we want to belong, how can we belong without having to make someone not belong? Mm. And that's a really live question for mm. me. It's a, it's a live inquiry. So I'm always seeking in every encounter to let people know they belong. You know, it's so 
valid to let people know they belong. And um, so coming into unity, creating community is a moment, it's a feeling of, am I helping others to belong? Is that what I'm serving? Or am I, turn, am I turning towards duality and away from community? And just my tribe. Am I only about my tribe? For, for us, it's more uh, just a welcoming of, yeah, of all of us in, in whatever state we come in, big, small, skinny, fat, you know, short, whatever color. You know, to us, it's just, it's just a, a welcoming of the family of humanity mm. in all our raw states, in our craziness, mm. in, in our insecurities, in our joy. Not because um, in that moment. In that moment, you know, not not because it, it fits a certain look or a trend or a fashion, but because this is what we're here to do to to be available. Yeah. I kind of feel like I'd like to close this meeting with some breaths together. Actually, mm. <laughs> it feels right to do that. Thank you. 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 Thank you.